It's a waste of time to tell trailblazers, dreamers, creatives that they're going the wrong way. We know. That's the point. We don't want to go where the current path leads. Tema Bryant. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. This episode is going to be a two-parter mini-series to help us wrap up the month, all about helping you discover your unique writing journey. Each of us is going to have a path in our journey that is wildly different from the next. Even if it's, hey, we're both self-publishing, the routes we take to self-publish are different. The routes we take before we even sit down to start writing can be wildly different. And neither is wrong. This is a particularly difficult thing for us to talk about because without knowing you, the listener, as an individual, it's hard to guide you on your writing journey. And we are talking to a lot more than just one listener, so we can't tell all of you, here's what you should do because all of you are different. But honestly, that's the point. We are here to tell you No two paths are the same. You don't have to copy what anybody else does. Like earlier on in this month, you don't have to take anybody else's advice on what to do just because they did it and it worked for them. It might not work for you. All any of us can ever do is say, this is the path that worked for me. Neil Gaiman, Lee Hole, everyone that you know that you would look to for advice All they can say is, this is what we've found that works. It might not work for you. Outlining might be a terrible thing that just kills all of your inspiration before it starts. The path that works for you is going to be unique. Today we're talking a little bit more about the way to grow. The acceptance of finding advice, learning, figuring out how to make yourself a better author and the journey that you go on as a storyteller from your first book to your last. Because you will change. This is a good thing. Any sort of development is wonderful and great. I don't want my writing to still be where it was 10, 15 years ago. So it is good to change in every step along the path that you're changing Things may take a fork that you didn't expect. You may say, I'm a pantser, and then you come to find out you have to actually do a little plotting. (laughs) I see a very common mentality that I feel is summed up in our opener and can be dangerous, and that is everyone else is doing it that way, so I want to do it a different way. I don't know what the different way is yet, but I want to do it differently. And yes, there is absolutely value in doing that. It's part of being an artist. It's part of making your own path and choosing your own way and things to say, I don't want to do it like everyone else. But when you're just getting started, it can also be a dangerous mentality to have. Because if you are saying they did all this, so I'm going to do all this, it's possible that they're doing all that because they tried this and this just makes things so much harder. Try to learn from other people's mistakes. There is 100% value in discovering your own way to do things. But if you don't have it all figured out before you take that first step, leaning on someone else's advice can be super helpful until you discover your own way to do things. When it comes to writing, you can start with how other authors started. You can take advice and get hints and get, hey, here's how I plot scenes. Here's how I do structure. Here's how I do this. Read those craft books. Listen to podcasts. Get all of that advice, but make it yours. Adapt it to what works for you. And it may start out that, yes, I'm going to use the same plotting method that so-and-so does, You get into it and you realize, okay, this mostly worked for me, but I need to change this, this, and this. And that is exactly what we want you to do. Experiment. See if it works for you. Continue to grow instead of deciding this is how I am. Part of the journey of discovering your specific path in writing is to get down to the basics 
of yourself, of understanding why you write. If you're just a verbal processor and you just want to have a journal and you're, like we talked about in the last episode, not making the choice to monetize. Cool. That's all you need to do in life. Write that way. Write however you want to write. I want to write to entertain others. I have no artistic ambitions. I would be kind of concerned if my readers read my book more than once just because I want them to go, wee, that was fun. Where's the next one? Other writers want to leave something behind as a legacy. This is sort of me. I don't necessarily care about the long-term legacy aspect of it, but I wanted something physical to hold, to show, to say, look, I wrote this. I created this. And now anybody across the world can have it. They can own this thing. My grandmother has been saying for years that she wants to tell her dad's story, especially his time during World War II. That would be her legacy for the generations to come. And just having a version of this story is all you really want to accomplish with it. The words are out there and that's enough. We have a couple reasons that we don't recommend that you write. So if you're like, hey, yes, this applies to me, maybe consider a different art form. The first one is if you're trying to convince people of your point of view. If I'm going to write a story so I can convince people that all guns are bad. That's not going to be a good reason to write a story because I'm not changing. I am just annoying people with throwing another opinion out into the void. Nonfiction is slightly different with that because people go into nonfiction expecting that sort of writing. But if you're writing fiction, convincing people of a certain point of view, maybe not the best. Telling a story of a certain point of view, that's different because your main goal is to tell the story. The other thing we don't recommend is writing for the sole purpose of becoming rich and famous. Well, I saw this guy on Facebook who said he wrote 10 books so far this year, and he can publish a thousand books this year with the help of AI. So at that point, I can become rich and famous without actually having to work. Nope, 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 mm-mm, mm-mm. Because who's reading those books? Absolutely nobody. The author Rebecca Thorne shared a funny TikTok where as part of this little skit, somebody was like, yeah, I'm going to publish a book and I'm going to make million dollars. And her response was, you know, that's not how it works, right? Like you have to have a backlog of books before you start making a decent amount of sustainable income. Like you do understand that, right? It's important to me that you understand that. (laughs) And that's exactly what it is. Writing one book is not going to make you rich and famous in 99% of the cases. Yes, you will have that one like random one-off story of one book is going to get you launched into this amazing career. Most of the time, it takes a long backlog before you get sustainable writing. So the question you should be asking yourself about your writing journey is, what are your writing goals? How far down this path do you want to go? Do you just want to have that one book that you have this idea for that you've been wanting to write for a long time? Do you just want to get that book on paper? Get it out of your system. That's how the first three books that I published started. I have this idea. It's super cool. I want to write it down. Or do you just want to have a book that you can give to your grandkids or in my case, my nieces and nephews to share like, hey, look, I did this really cool thing. I was a published author. Or do you want strangers to read your book? Do you want to increase your reach to people across the globe? Because the internet is cool and we can do that now. Do you want to have books out there that are just enjoyable to read? Is this a career goal for you? Do you want to be able to live and sustain your life based on your writing? Knowing your goal, knowing how far down this path you want to go, will change drastically how you approach writing, how you approach navigating your journey. For me, it would be so cool to have a Sanderson like convention just for me and my books. <laughs> a whole convention. You gotta write them first. <laughs> So a lot of people will move these goalposts, especially as they hit them. 
they finish that first draft and go, this is cool. Maybe I do want to share it with the world. Maybe I do want to have a physical copy in my hands. Maybe I do want to polish it and then possibly write this other book that I have another idea for. Where you are in this spectrum, how far do you want to go? How much do you want to invest in this is completely up to you. And your path doesn't have to end. You can keep setting new goals. You can keep setting new posts. Even if that is returning back to where you had been, it's still further along in your writing journey because you as a writer are different. You as a writer are changed because of the writing you have done, because of how far you've gone on that path. So even if you go back to, well, I just want to write for myself, you're not actually going back to the beginning. You are just taking another step, a different fork in the road. It is a completely viable option to go, I don't know. What I know is I want to write this scene today. And then tomorrow I'll wake up and maybe I want to write this scene over there. Maybe I want to write a completely different novel. Maybe I want to do something else. And then the day after that, maybe I'll want to sculpt something instead. Wherever your journey takes you in the arts, please pursue it. If you are meant to be a writer, you will always come back to writing. But in every art, but especially in your storytelling, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 